Judge Dawson, you're here with another Finish First program, Cycle Breaker Talk, where our goal is to improve ourselves every single day. You know, the reason that you're tuned into this program is because I believe in you. I know that you can achieve greater than where you are right now. I mean, think about it. You know, I'm working on this project called Human Counter Development. Human Counter Development. Human Counter Development is basically a concept that you and I, over the course of time, have been developed counter or in contradiction to you achieving your greatness. That means there is so much potential that lies within you, yet you're not realizing that potential because of what's been developed in you over the course of your life. So let me break it down in case you're wondering, okay, Judge, what are you talking about? Basically, what I'm saying is when you were born and when I was born, we had dreams, right? And I'm not talking about small dreams. I'm talking about those crazy dreams. If you're a young lady, maybe you dreamed of being a princess, a queen. If you're a young boy, maybe you dreamed of being Spider-Man or Superman, right? Those big dreams, dreams of being a millionaire, dreams of being rich, dreams of being married and in love and having a family. But somewhere down the line, we stopped dreaming. We stopped developing. We stopped thinking that we can achieve greater things. And we fell into the trap of human counter development. There are several reasons why that happened. First of all, we've bought into the concept of the poverty mindset. If you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through my book called The Cycle Breaker. In that book, we're following the life of five young men who found themselves in various legal situations. Based on those situations, they were before a judge, like myself, and instead of the judge immediately sending them to jail, the judge sent them to Camp Cycle Breaker. And it's at this camp, while they were isolated, while they were forced to face their demons that they began to develop because they went through the process of development. And that was the basis of the camp, that's the basis of the book. And right now, if you've been following along, we're in chapter 12 of the book and we're talking about poverty mindsets. So what is a poverty mindset? Poverty mindset is the mindset that keeps you from living your absolute best life. Now we know that poverty in and of itself is real. And there's several different types of poverty. You have financial poverty, you have mental, and you have spiritual on top of that. The levels of poverty, financial, spiritual, mental, all are real and all exist. Now poverty can be dealt with in several ways. And in fact, you know, we may do a whole subject, a whole workshop on poverty and talk about generational poverty because that's a whole nother issue basically generational poverty and it relates to what we're doing here generational poverty is the concept that if you are coming from a family who lived in poverty statistically it's been proven that you may have a higher propensity to also live in poverty and then the next generation after that so meaning the children that you have may live in poverty so basically that's that's really what i talk about when i talk about being a cycle breaker Think about it from these terms. If no one in your family ever graduated from high school, they all dropped out, they all undervalued education, there's a good chance that you may have the same approach when it comes to education, which means you may drop out too. You may undervalue education. And if that's the case, your children may do the same thing and your children's children. So that's what's meant by generational poverty and generational situations. So let's take that back to the poverty mindset. A poverty mindset is the mindset that you cannot achieve greatness. 
You may look at somebody else and say, you know what, that's for them. I can't go to school. I can't graduate from high school. I can't go to college. That's a poverty mindset. Or you may look at a situation and say, you know what, I'm on welfare. You know, I have subsidized housing. I'm blessed and this is where I'm going to be. But what I mean by having a poverty mindset is you have not yet realized that no, that's just a stepping stone for you right now. You can do better. Matter of fact, you will do better as soon as you set your mind to it. So the key is to develop a mindset that is beyond where you are attacking your situation to the sense that you want to get out of it. Here's your homework. Here's why our attack against the poverty mindset is so very important. The poverty mindset can be compared to a virus. Think about it. A virus comes in your body and it finds something that it can grow on, something that it can feed off of. And often it may be something, a breakdown in our immune system. It could be something that you've eaten, something that you've developed over the years. But a virus attacks your body and it weakens you to the point where it creates a sickness. And that sickness is something that you then, you then need treatment for. The same thing happens with poverty mindset. As I mentioned in the beginning of our workshop, we were all born with dreams, major dreams, major goals. And at some point, the human development process began to drop these little itty bitty pieces of doubt in your mind, little itty bitty pieces of, of insecurity, making you wonder if you are good enough or if you can accomplish your dreams and your goals. Or maybe it happened because you had so many run-ins with the legal system, with judges like myself, but unlike myself, judges who either berated you, talked to you like you were crap, or police officers or prosecutors, people who basically poisoned your mindset to the point that now you don't even believe in yourself. But that's why we have to attack it as if it is a virus, something that you have to eliminate and destroy. So what do you do when there's a virus that you're dealing with? Well, first thing you do is you go and get a diagnosis, right? You go to the doctor. So that's one of the things where we fail as people, as individuals. We, for some reason, refuse to get help or the correct help. And I'm not talking about going to the bar, sitting at the bar and saying, girl, you know, X, Y, and Z is happening, or talking to your man and saying, hey, this is what I'm going through. I'm talking about going to someone who can help you. If you found yourself suffering from some other virus, whether it was coronavirus or anything like that, you wouldn't necessarily go to the corner store or to the bar to ask for help. No, in that situation, you would seek someone who could actually uplift you, who could actually give you information that can assist you coming out of that virus. So the first step is to seek help from your situation. If you are suffering from a lack of motivation, Maybe you need to talk to somebody who's doing what you like to do. If you're suffering from being in a domestic violence relationship, that's a poverty relationship, right? A poverty mindset. You need to seek somebody who can help you out of that situation. Whatever it is, in order to break out of the poverty mindset, the first step is to seek the help of someone who can give you help, a doctor. The next thing is to actually take the doctor's advice, right? So if you're listening to this program, it's because something caused you to be drawn to me. Maybe it's because I ordered you to listen to the program because you're in my probation department, or maybe somehow you came across the video, but either way, you're now listening to someone who has a little bit of wisdom. And now the question is, are you going to apply the wisdom? Are you gonna say, you know what, Judge Dawson has experienced these things and he's come up with these theories and processes so that I can get better, and you listen to it and actually apply it to your life. Because just going to the doctor and just walking away without applying the, the tools or the remedy is not going to help you. So after you seek help, then you have to be willing to apply what you received. And oftentimes, that's medicine. So what's your medicine? The medicine is whatever it takes to alleviate the poverty mindset or your poverty situation. So for you, maybe drinking's a problem. So maybe your medicine is not to drink. Maybe it's to go cold turkey. Maybe it's to take some steps down, a 12-step program or something like that. But that, that may be your medicine. But you have to ingest the medicine to kill the virus. Maybe 
The poverty mindset is that relationship, that domestic violence relationship that you know you need to be out of, right? So now your medicine is you have to set up the steps, your safety plan so that you can walk away from that relationship and move on to your higher destiny. But that is medicine too. Because to walk away from a relationship, to walk away from somebody that you care about, somebody that you've been involved with for many, many years, that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of courage, but you can do it. So you have to attack this poverty mindset like it's a virus, something that you want to eliminate from your life so that you can reach your highest potential. Here are the more practical tools that you can use right now to deal with the poverty mindset, to deal with this counter human development. One, question your beliefs. We need to really figure out, why do I believe what I believe? Why do I think all men cheat? Why do I think that all police officers are bad or that all judges are bad? You need to really just question your beliefs. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna challenge your beliefs at this point. I'm just saying, in order to figure out ways to defeat the poverty mindset or the mindset that you have, one that could be a black, you have to question your beliefs at least challenge your belief. Question what you do every day, or at least challenge what you do every day. So if it's something like, maybe every day you get up and smoke weed, why is it that I get up every day and smoke weed? You have to ask yourself that question because maybe there's something deeper that you're dealing with. Maybe there's something that you are avoiding, something that you're, you're medicating through the process of smoking marijuana. Why do I get up and drink every day? You know, what is it that I'm trying to deal with that maybe there's a more healthy way to deal with so that I'm not destroying my life or putting myself in a position where I may end up in a jail? So the bottom line is the best way to deal with a poverty mindset is start to question your beliefs. And then the next step is to eliminate the poverty around you. Now, what do I mean by that? We've talked about it and, it's, and it bears repeating over and over and over again. There's a theory that says, if, unless you hear it 16 times, you're not gonna remember it. But we have to start controlling the environment that we surround ourselves with. If the people around you have a poverty mindset, you're gonna continue to have a poverty mindset. If the people around you, all they wanna talk about is fighting, getting high, getting drunk, going out partying, they're gonna keep you in this rut. Here's an interaction I had with a young lady in court and, and God bless her, I think she's on the right track because I can sense that she's a wonderful young lady and she wants better for herself. But she was telling me about her situation. I said, tell me why you ended up in my court. And basically it was a fight that got out of control. But one of the things she told me about this fight that just kept ringing in my head is that after the controversy started with her and another young lady and a friend and another friend, at some point, her family got involved. And she said her mother called and her sisters and cousins, and they were all like, you know what? We're going to go fight them. Let's set it up. We're going to meet them. We're going to fight them. Pause right there. That's what I mean by your environment. Now, I don't know the environment. I'm not intimate with it. I wasn't there. But if you have a mother and a cousin and, a, and an auntie that's asking you to go fight or suggesting that you go fight, that's not the right environment. That's a poverty mindset. Because if you follow that path down the road, you have three possible outcomes. One, maybe you win the fight and it's over. Two, maybe you win the fight and the people come back and you have to fight them again. Three, maybe somebody gets hurt or arrested. See, none of those options are good enough for me because I don't have a poverty mindset. I want better for myself, I want better for my family. And if you follow that all the way down the line, there's no way you can determine that those options are better for you or your family or your future. Going to jail, getting hurt, or having to fight the same people over and over and over again, if those are the three possible outcomes and only 1% chance that you win and the fight is over, why would you take that? So, to bring that home, what I'm saying is your environment, the people that said, let's go fight, they need to be out of your life. Now, maybe not totally out of your life, right? I mean, you can't just go and disown your mom, 
In some cases, you may need to, but let's just say you can't do that, right? But what you can do is limit your interaction with the people who are negative, the people who are keeping you in the poverty mindset. They don't deserve your attention. They don't deserve your energy, and you have to eliminate them from your life. How do you identify a poverty mindset? Number one, the people around you. Are they talking about other people? And I'm not talking about occasionally, every now and then, but generally the conversation, every time you talk to them on the, on the phone, is it something about someone else? And not just good things, but most importantly, is it bad things, right? Because we're not talking about an abundance mindset, we're talking about a poverty mindset. And if your focus is on what somebody's doing wrong or how somebody else failed, that's an example of a poverty mindset. So the first question you have to ask yourself, when I talk to people every day, what are they talking about? What are they trying to feed in my mind? And you know why that's so important? Is because you wouldn't allow anybody to dump garbage anywhere in your house, your apartment, or let's say the, the passenger seat of your car. And I'm not gonna say in your car because some of you keep some dirty cars, I've seen them, and you know, it could be many reasons for that. But let's say that passenger seat or your seat, your driver's seat, Imagine your car, you get in the car, right before you get to sit down, somebody dumps garbage right in your driver's seat. You're gonna either yell at that person, hit that person, or kick them out your car. But yet, we don't do the same thing when we let people in our mind and they dump garbage in our mindset. Again, by the speech that they have. They're always talking about somebody. They're always calling up to, to gossip about the negative things. Nothing positive. Nothing neutral, but always negative. Guard your mind like you would guard anything else that you value, your car, your apartment, your house. So the first one is, what are the people talking about who are in your circle or in your life? Number two, watch their moves. What are the people doing? You know, it's one thing to always talk positive because we can all do that. We've seen enough positive, you know, inspirational speeches and things like that. So we all know how to do that. But the question is, can they actually move in a positive way or is it just talk? So what you got to do is watch the person over the course of a day, the course of a week, a month, and see if they can stick to that positive mindset that they claim they have. Are their actions more positive than negative? Are they more critical of people or are they helping people? Do you see them lending money rather than always trying to make money? Do you see them complimenting people versus always trying to break them down or talk about them behind their back? So the way people move will be another indication of whether or not they have a mindset that's poverty or abundance. And then another thing I'll mention, a third one, because there are many more, is how do they treat you over the long term? Is this person gentle with you, always trying to bring out the best in you, always trying to remind you of your greatness? Or do they criticize you and bring out the reasons why you're not achieving your goals or why you'll never be a success? Or are they always just critical of your efforts or critical of your dreams? Because remember, we started way back in the beginning of this workshop talking about the fact that when you were younger, when I was younger, we had major, big goals, dreams, desires. And slowly over time, human development, the poverty mindset, the people we led in our circle, they broke down those dreams, they broke down our goals. So you have to ask yourself, the people that I'm trusting in my life, the people that I'm calling my friends, my best friend, my girl, my dude, is that person really supporting you? Are they willing to invest in your dreams? Or are they always taken from your dreams? Are they willing to take your call at three in the morning if you say, you know what, I just wanna talk about what's been on my mind, how I wanna build this business? Or do they say, you know what, call me in the morning? Because if they do that, they're the same person that will take your call at 3 a.m. if you wanna talk about somebody. 
or if you want to talk about gossip or what just happened at the club. So the third element, the third way to determine whether or not somebody is living a poverty mindset and they're in your environment is analyzing how they treat you. Are they treating you with the respect, the kindness, the gentleness that you deserve, the compassion that you deserve, and most importantly, the support that you deserve? And if they are not, they are adding to the destruction and the demise of your dreams. They're adding to the counterdevelopment in your life. And we have to eliminate that in order to be cycle breakers. Let's go. I know it's hard to break the poverty mindset. I know it's hard to eliminate thinking that's been going on in your mind for years based on this whole concept of counter-development. I understand that. But you have to believe that you are better than what anyone else thinks of you. You can achieve your greatest dreams and even beyond them. You are an amazing human being. You are born to be great. You were not born to live in poverty. You were not born to be in jail. You were not born to be going in and out of the cycle of domestic violence and abusive relationships and worthless friendships. You are important to this world. In fact, when you leave, there should be a mark that you left on this world that's positive. More than just, I had 20 Gucci bags and a Louis purse. More than just, I was the biggest dope man in the city. You want to leave a mark of greatness. You want to leave a mark, even if it's just with your children. Let's say you don't even have children. Even if it's just with the people that you meet, you want them to know that you didn't waste this human vessel that you were blessed with. You didn't waste this mind that you were blessed with. So the steps of getting out of a poverty mindset, the first and most important step is to realize your value, to realize that you are important. I don't care, sitting right there, right where you are, you are important. I don't care how many times you've been arrested, you are important. I don't care how many relationships you've been in and how many people have broken up with you or broken your heart, you are important. I don't care what that man or woman says to you when they're trying to break you down, you are important. I don't care what that police officer did when he stopped you. That was his problem. That's something he's gonna have to deal with when it comes to his maker. You are still important. Don't underestimate your value. Realize that you were born to be a cycle breaker. You were born to leave a positive legacy in this world. And that is the most important step to eliminating the poverty mindset.